Hi, this is Tim Erden, author of Statistics in Plain English, and in this video I'm going to use SPSS to generate um, a multiple regression, and then I'll walk you through how to interpret the output. So this is a SPSS data set. If you look at the data view, it shows you the values. I made this data set up, so um, this is not real data and I don't think the relationships between the variables would be the same as, um, as I got with these made-up data. But what we have is um, level of education, so how many years <clears throat> did the individual go to school, income level, how much does the individual make per month in thousands of dollars, and then how many years has the person been in the workforce. So if we analyze these data, to run a regression, we go to regression and we're going to go to linear. As I mentioned um, in the book, uh, there's a lot of different ways of doing regression and we're just scratching the surface of it in the book. Here's an example of how many different types of regression there are. There's actually more than this. Um, but we're just going to do a linear regression and we're going to make income our dependent variable. So uh, we want to see if we can predict how much somebody makes in a month based on how many years they went to school, or education variable, and how many years they've been in the workforce. So the statistics, um, we, let's get some descriptives, and um, that'll be good. Um, we, can, we don't need to do the plots. Um, we're going to exclude cases on a list-wise basis, so anybody who's missing data on any of these three variables in the analysis is um, not going to be included. And then <clears throat> um, we've got options for um, how we want to enter the variables. So the enter option means you just put all of the predictor variables into the model at one time and um, see how it turns out. Stepwise um, is a method where you can have the variables entered one at a time into the model and um, with the strongest predictors being entered into the model first and um, that lets you see how much uh, of additional variance is explained by each predictor variable that you add to the model. We're just going to do the simple enter method and click OK. <clears throat> and here's what we get. Um, first, we get descriptive statistics, and um, that tells us that there's 40 cases in the sample, and it shows us the means and standard deviations. And um, then we get a little correlation matrix to show us how the variables are correlated with each other, and we can see that income is pretty strongly correlated with education and with years of work. Education and years of work are correlated a bit more weakly at 0.309. So the two predictor variables are correlated with each other, but not so strongly that they wipe each other out. And they're both correlated with the dependent variable. So looking at the correlations among these, I, I'm going to guess that each of the predictor variables are significant predictors of the outcome variable or the dependent variable income. So we'll see. <clears throat> This is our model summary, whoops, our model summary here. And this tells us that the correlation between the two predictor variables together um, and the dependent variable is 0.811. This is what we're most interested in. The R square here is 0.658. Uh, the adjusted R square, which takes into account how many variables are in the model. And, um, and how much noise or errors in the model. Um, but what the R squared tells us is how much of the variance in our dependent variable, income, is explained by our combination of predictor variables, and it is 65.8% of the variance is explained. So that's a lot of variance explained by these two predictor variables because they're both pretty highly correlated with the dependent variable. Our ANOVA just tells us that our F value is statistically significant. So these predictor variables together um, 
are able to explain a significant amount of variance in our um, in our dependent variable. So we already pretty much guessed that, but this confirms that it's a statistically significant relationship between the predictor variables and the dependent variable. And then down here, we get to see, um, first, this is our intercept, 1.42. So that is when years of education and years in the workforce are both at zero, we would predict income to be um, uh, at negative 1.42, which um, doesn't make a lot of sense, but that's where the regression line intercepts the y-axis. And then these are our regression coefficients. And these over here are our betas. These are our standardized regression coefficients. And the standardized regression coefficient is the good one to look at because it puts the variables, the predictor variables on the same scale and lets you compare them to each other. So looking at this, we can see that years of work is a stronger predictor of income than years of education. Going over to our T values here, the T value um, um, is the regression coefficient divided by the standard error. <clears throat> and over here, the SIG is our P value. And both of our predictor variables are highly significant. That means they are both statistically significant predictors of our dependent variable. Uh, with a p-value of less than 0 0.001. So both are highly significant predictors. So that's what we thought by looking at the correlation matrix. Years of education and years in the workforce, <coughs> excuse me, both predict how much income one has in a month. So how much money one makes in a month is predicted by years of education and years in the workforce. Both are unique predictors. Years in the workforce is a stronger predictor than years of education, um, um, but they are both significant even when controlling for the other predictors. So years of education is a significant predictor of income even after, after controlling for the effects that years in the workforce has on um, 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 income and vice versa. <clears throat> years of work is a significant predictor of income even after controlling for the variance that was explained by years of education. So that's how you run an SPSS um, regression and that is how you interpret the output from an SPSS regression. I hope that's helpful.